flow. <sighs> Can you tell how heavy I am? <laughs> I mean, not physically, but you know, spiritually. <laughs> yeah, it's been a hard season. Um, it hasn't been okay. <laughs> no, it's been very difficult. And, um, I wanted to kind of share that today with you guys. Um, reading Isaiah. I, I, uh, I want to encourage you to grab your Bible right now because, um, there's something really powerful about, um, the message of God when we can actually read it versus just hearing it because the devil, okay, <laughs> people we always go like, oh, you just got a demonic mindset. Well, yeah, okay, according to the Bible, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So, yeah, I do. I do. Like, the devil distracts our minds from really receiving things. So, you want to actually read it. It will help you a lot. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to read Isaiah 53, the chapter 53, starting at verse 2. And we'll see what God does with this. Lord, I need your help right now. Uh, I really need your help. I pray that this, you know, even if you care about that one sheep, so even if it just helps one person, that's all that matters, Lord. I pray that you would um, use this message to speak to people and that the stuff that I've been going through wouldn't be for nothing, Lord, but it will be for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. <laughs> I, all day long, I just feel like I want to cry. I'm on the verge of crying, but... um. I'm just gonna read the read the scriptures and just say whatever comes to my mind. I really don't have anything planned specifically, kind of like I have an idea. I just wanna share what I've been going through. Okay, I'm just gonna read the scriptures now. <laughs> I need some prayer right now. Because I'm going through a hard time. You know, we do. We're not perfect put together people, right? <coughs> We're broken people. Mm -hmm. Although some of us don't want to admit we're broken. Hang on. I have a pregnant cat. And uh, my other cats are messing with her. So, hang on. <laughs> my cat goes in there and tortures this cat that we're watching for a few months. Oh my gosh. Is he like trying to put her into early labor or what? <laughs> um. Alright. Isaiah 53. He grew up before us. This is talking about Jesus. This is a prophecy about Jesus. He grew up before us as a tender shoot. Or root, you could say, I think. And like a root. Actually, shoot and root are two different things. Out of a dry ground. So that, that in itself is powerful, you guys. He grew up like a tender root. And like a root. Out of dry ground ground like out of a dry dark world you know with lack of like light love compassion like Christ like you know all these things that embody Christ you know dryness spiritually that's my whole life Actually, I think that's all of us. Well, maybe some of us are blessed and born into a family with lots of strong Christians. But most of us draw, grow up in dry root. Um, I love this scripture. I'm able to relate to this stuff. I think you will be too if you're really a Christian. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him it wasn't about the physical beauty it wasn't about like um i'm a you know like superior you know king over the land you know in this world he is the king but he's not the king of this world you know he didn't have any beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that would we should desire him 
He was despised and rejected by mankind with a man of suffering. A man of suffering. I am a woman of suffering. Because of, and familiar with pain. Uh-huh. Like one from whom people hid their faces. He was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Oh my gosh, that really speaks to me. Like, you know, people rejected me my whole life. But I know why now. Because I was always a child of God. Oh yes, I was. Oh yeah. I found a box that I made years and years and years ago. And I found a poem I wrote. And it said, Heaven was sealed in my heart. I wrote a poem. It was really pretty. And, um... 2000, 2015, I didn't even know Christ then. I know why I was rejected my whole life now. Because I was predestined as his child. He knew before creation, even though I didn't know him then, that I was his. That's why I've been so rejected. This is Satan's plan to stop God's will for my life. But it won't, it won't be stopped. Because I'm more than an overcomer in Christ. And um, he will have his way, whatever his purpose is for my life. Um, in which I think it's these, these little videos I do right now, so. Um, he was, <laughs> he was, he was held in low esteem. I, that one, that part where it says he was held in low esteem. People in my family, like my closest people to me, they don't really esteem what I say. <laughs> They don't. They don't really listen to what I'm saying. I think they just kind of are just like, okay, yeah. But happened with Jesus too. Surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings. Yet we considered him punished by God. We considered him punished. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. He was, well, he was, he took, okay. Stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace. How powerful what Jesus did was. He took that punishment to bring us peace we got his holy spirit and forgiven because of him and what he did oh, the peace is so beautiful when you go through really hard stuff and you lose your peace for however long it may be you realize how valuable that peace in christ is or like you know if you live your whole life with horrible stuff and then come to christ and experience his peace you know what that lack of peace is like Actually, all of us who don't know Christ know that if you are really honest with yourself. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Now, some people think that means spiritually, some people physically. I don't know. I, you know, it's... anyways, I'm not going to talk about that part. That's a lot to say about that, but let me continue. You guys, I'm not even acting like I got it together. Look, I don't. I'm just sharing what's on my heart, and I'm sharing scripture. I'm sharing my hard time. I hope that you find this beneficial in some way uh my eyes are just now trying to find though where i left off at okay hang on okay we are like sheep we are all like sheep gone astray each one of us has turned to our own way and the lord has led laid on him the iniquity of us all Something that comes to mind for this scripture, this part right here, it says we are all like sheep. It says 
all. That's all of mankind. And how are sheep? Sheep need a shepherd. Sheep follow. Sheep follow. So you're a sheep too. You're following the devil or you're following Christ. But like you're following something. You're imitating something. What are you imitating? Like sheep. Who do you want to be your shepherd? You want the devil to be your shepherd? You want Jesus to be your shepherd? We have all gone astray. Each one of us turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid him the iniquity of us all. Praise God. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. This is talking about when they took him in to kill him. You know. <sighs> oppressed and afflicted. Wow. Wow. That's what happens with us Christians. You know, it's part of the Christian walk, but um, it's going to be worth it in the end. It's just not easy going through it. Yet he did not open his mouth. I like that. We don't always have to, like, open our mouth for the wicked in front of us that are spewing slander and false allegations and just trying to make you look like crap or belittling you or whatever, you know? Like, you don't have to open your mouth and justify yourself we don't have to we're not supposed to justify i don't think we need to justify ourselves before men there is actually a scripture about wicked people justifying themselves before men well i i don't like if i'm right with my lord if I, if i'm walking in the light man um cool i don't have to justify myself to you so sometimes it's just better to be in front of stupidity by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yeah, false judgment. People friggin', okay, I'm gonna continue. Yet he, yet who of his gender, generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death though he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth yet it was the lamb lord's will to crush him you guys this is a good part right here i got a revelation from this part like a couple weeks ago yet it was the lord's will and actually in another scripture it says it, the Lord was pleased to crush him. Pleased. Because, um, okay, wait, hang on, okay. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And through the Lord, through, though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin. But um, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By this knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. So, like, I'm like, what? Like, it pleased the Lord to crush him. And I was thinking, it pleases the Lord to allow me to be crushed. It pleases the Lord to allow afflictions in my life. Not because he's a mean God, you know, but because he's a good God. And we're like freaking jacked up people who need a loving father to chastise them. You know, um, to um, humble us. And drive far from us that that pride that's so deeply rooted in our sinful nature you know and he's not looking <laughs> the good and wise God that he is is not looking at the momentary suffering that we go through he but he is a good you know he is a good uh, pottery maker 
he stands right outside that fire ready to pull you out at the right time when you can't you know before you break just at the right time just to make you you know he he know he makes good pottery perfect pottery the good father he is he knows what he's doing he allows the devil to attack us through people and to oppress us at times and but i think that like it's not just like a free-for-all for the devil i think that he you know sometimes prevents the devil from doing certain things obviously because if if god wasn't sovereign then i would go outside my house and be killed by somebody who's a demon possessed person a satanist or like another person who doesn't know christ who is demon possessed and um i kind of just went <laughs> i don't even i got lost in my thoughts all right but um i'm gonna continue Hopefully something good came out of my mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Nope, that's not where it was. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the Lord is pleased to allow us to be afflicted. He's looking at the end result. You know, not, not the temporary moment, but the end result. And he does allow us to go through the fire. He says that in the Bible, you will have trials and tribulations. He says you will, you know, go through difficult things. But he's with us in the fire. Look, he was for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know. not He's not just standing outside of the fire, actually. That's a pretty bad analogy, and it's not very biblical. Because he's with us in the fire. He gave us the Holy Spirit. So crush that analogy in your minds. Yeah. Because that's not good. He's with us in the fire. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know? He's with us. Because actually if it wasn't for him. I think I would have been overwhelmed. With what happened to me recently. You know. I had two betrayals. And then they turn around. And act like victims. But I forgive them. Well at least I'm trying to. <laughs> I have a lot of pain, pain still, but. God, the good God he is, brings good out of every bad situation. I believe that whatever happens in my life, you know, whatever more God has planned before he takes me on to him. He said he's sovereign. And it's not just a free-for-all for the devil. He has to go to God like he did in the book of Job. And God has to allow certain things to happen to Job. But, you know, in the end, Job, Job was blessed. So, suffering is not fun. Affliction, oppression persecution, slander, oh gosh, it's not fun. Betrayal, so Jesus betrayed by Judas. It's not fun. It hurts. It deeply hurts. But what we can't do is stay in the victim mode. We can't stay in that poor me mode because the, that doesn't do anybody good and no. And, and it's draining and it's just an error. It's error. And we need to look at those scriptures in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. And it says, Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, for great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are you when men revile in you revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you so you know we can't be a, a victim and just be like oh you know oh i was so wronged like yeah 
But you know what? Let's rejoice because we know why it's happening. Like, I know why. I know. I know why I'm getting attacked. I know why every freaking shady Christian who... <laughs> somehow, okay, they're just walking in a little flesh right now. I'm, they're just... They're just walking in the flesh, that's all. You know, they're just a little weak in certain areas. We all have weaknesses. I know why they're turning against me. I know, I know what's happening. The freaking demons up in them are rising up and turning against me because I'm growing in the spirit with the Lord. I'm pushing through. I'm denying my flesh. I'm pushing through in worship. And I'm a freaking threat to the kingdom of hell and Satan and his stupid demons and what he's doing to people. And they're so freaking blind they can't even see it. They deny it. They, you deny, you freaking blatantly deny truth. Oh my gosh. Christians denying the truth. Don't send me scriptures. Really? Okay. I told you guys I'm not put together. But I'm I'm bring I'm sharing my heart, okay? So I hope it blesses you. You can think and slander me all you want. I don't really okay, really I'm learning not to care. And the light's not on. And there was light. <laughs> Alright. <sighs> I am under some heavy spiritual oppression that's gonna break in the name of Jesus. It's gonna break in the name of Jesus. It's gonna break in the name of Jesus. But, um, yeah, so life is hard, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right, I'm going to continue these scriptures and then end the video. Okay. Yes, it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offer, offspring and prolong his days. And he, the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Um. And the King James, I like the King James better, but I looked up the NIV. But um, this is the NIV version, but I like the King James version. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge and my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great. And he will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. You know, hung on the cross with the three. Uh, with the other two people. He bore the sins of many. And made intercession for the saints. The end. I like the part where um, in the King James it says he poured out this, his uh, soul for the sin offering. I think it was. I think he said that. Yeah, and I was like, I pour out my soul for, um, <laughs> you know, for as a testimony to squish the double. Yeah. <sighs> you guys want to see my cool painting? I got this new painting. It was at the thrift store I was having a bad day it was really a gift from God it was on sale for 50% off so I got it for 25 let me show it to you hopefully because my my phone is connected to a charger and it might uh, if it disconnects and it did but it's still on cool okay hang on here we go look at this isn't that beautiful and then God, he like showed, I was like, yeah, but it doesn't have any biblical. I was looking at it. I was like, I wish it was kind of biblical. And then um, <laughs> the Lord was like, look, the lighthouse. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm the light. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, that's cool. That works. I like the lighthouse. <laughs> I love God. He's so cool.
He's so cool. He's so he's he's so personal. He's such a personal god. He really and I, I like having I love the Lord. I I love the Lord. Other people don't always understand me. At least I have one good friend that does. But my Lord, he understands me. He understands he understands me and he loves me. And I love him. Because I'm his little sheep. Oops. <laughs> I'm his little sheep. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that looks right. Hmm. Why is that not right? Oh, I had the bottom side up. I got this from a thrift store. I have to like give him a bath and take all these threads off but little sheep you guys have a blessed night bye bye